Big round of applause, please, for our second speaker of the evening, Alex. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Alex Rowan. I'm a solution architect for, for Docker in Europe. That means I don't work in engineering. I work with enterprise customers, mostly all, all over Europe. So I think the previous presentation was really, really great as a form of introduction because it's really the same topics, right? And I'm working with customers who face the same challenges and, and the whole discussion about what a Docker in production must look like is, a, is obviously a topic of the moment that I see a lot of uh, organizations, whether big or small, moving uh, in that direction. And today, <clears throat> sorry, today I wanted to talk about Docker Data Center, which is our product, it's our commercial offering. So I'm not going to necessarily show you a lot about the exciting technology. I'm going to try to present you a, a view of what we think is the answer to all these problems. Right? Docker Data Center is the way we see an integrated platform uh, um, to run containers. And originally, I, I had a lot of slides with a lot of details that I made a terrible decision. I say, okay, I'm going to just do five slides as an introduction. And then I'm going to mostly do a demo, which is a bit risky. Um, the idea is that my whole point is to say the focus of Docker Data Center is simplicity. And a, a large part of the, the, the focus of Docker engineering is simplicity. Right? It's trying to simplify. And we also think that introducing Docker in your environment should help you simplify things. Of course, if you think about all you have to do to, to run these containers, to um, do service discovery, to manage them, to manage logs, to monitor all that stuff, it doesn't seem like, it doesn't look like it's, it's simpler, right? But our point is, yes, it should help you simplify. It should help you have less layers in your environment. And even the way we see what a platform should be that integrate a lot of the services and not just the Docker engine running containers, uh, we think it should also be simple. And basically, my challenge to prove that is, is to install the Cloud Data Center and show you a bit of the features, but to do a, a, a live installation because I think if it's hard to install, then chances are it's going to be hard to operate, right? And so I'm going to try and do that, but first I wanted to show you a few, a few slides. This is uh, the slide I use when I start any discussion, basically, with anyone, whether they are expert, very, a lot of experience with Docker, whether they're just starting, they're a large organization, they're an enterprise, a startup, or whoever that is. It's just to give you some kind of uh, 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 it's kind of a frame, framing the discussion, right? The Docker mission, so it's a big word, the mission, but the idea is that we work and we produce technology, we, we, we build products, and to help you build, ship, and run distributed applications everywhere. So, uh, it's interesting because we don't talk about containers here, right? Containers are mean to an end, but it's good to not get bogged down into the details of, oh, I have containers now, how I'm going to run that, right? It's good to stay focused on why we adopted that technology, why you adopted that technology, because I don't know, I often get questions, okay, tell us why we should use Docker, and I don't know, you tell me, right? There's so many different use cases. I think the, the Daniel's presentation is also great because there's a lot of discussions around, for instance, best practices how you should run things, how you should build images, how you should architect your, your applications. And again, at Docker, we don't necessarily have a lot of opinions on this. We certainly see emerging best practices in the community. We, we share that information. We talk with a lot of different people, but we're providing technology, right? The, the, the best practices are basically defined by users, customers, anyone in the community, other uh, um, actors in the ecosystem. And that's also part of the design of the application. We want to help you 
built up and run distributed applications, but we're not going to tell you this is how you should build them. And we want to provide to to create a, a platform that should have as little opinion as possible about how you build your stuff. Um, so that's the mission, right? Keep it simple and not opinionated, basically. Sometimes, of course, these two goals are opposite, right? In general, it's easier to do something simple if you, there's just one way to do everything on the platform and adding options and supporting different use cases and, and opinions or design practices tend to introduce complexity. So it's not, of course, uh, an easy goal. And we also have these kind of three pillars where we think that Docker and Docker adoption is about agility, portability, and control. Um, I'll come, that to, come back to that, but in general, you tend to come for from one use case. In general, it's agility, it's developing faster, uh, going to market faster, or just um, just uh, solving a problem you, you have uh, uh, at your level, right, in your team or individually, making your life easier. And then portability is also something we see, I mean, we talked about cloud platforms, how you can move workloads around, and, and a way to present Docker for us is to say, it's an abstraction layer. So certainly the engine is that, an abstraction layer on the, on the Earth's environment, but the whole platform, it's designed, the APIs, the way we, de de sorry, we design the platform and the way we uh, decide to make these choices of features or, or architecture, it's all about providing the thinnest layer of abstraction on top of environments so that you can target all kinds of different environments using the same tools, the same APIs. And control is, of course, the topic uh, of the moment when you talk about production, right? In general, it's, okay, we have solved all of that, but if we need to move to production, then it means that we need access control. We need to think about security. Maybe we didn't think a lot about that. If you're in a large organization, you're going to have other teams and, uh, and parts of your organization say, well, actually, you cannot do that, or you should do this. And, and the role of the platform is also to provide that level of control. So a lot of ideas about, okay, simplicity, um, uh, trying to avoid having strong opinions about your own stuff, uh, agility, portability, and so on. But all of that has de uh, design goals, right? And it, that's, there's a direct impact on how we build the software, and it's good to keep that in mind when you look at how we build that, what features we implement first but feature we decide to implement later and so on. And the result uh, as uh, we see it is container as a service, so that's the expression, everything has to be somehow as a service. The, the short definition of that is that it's a platform that will run the containers you build, the images you build, the application you build, uh, whether they're running in a container or they're a set of container, and it should do all of that, but it shouldn't do more than that, it should only simplify your life, make it easy to run the Dockerized application you have, but it shouldn't constrain that. It shouldn't tell you, oh, to run on that platform, you need to do that, or you need to build your application or this way, or your images need to be very big, or they need to be very small, or anything like that. Again, try not to have too much opinion. Um, quickly about the, the architecture, so Docker Data Center is based on a lot of components and some of them you know, some of them maybe you don't. Uh, obviously the basis of all of that is the runtime, the Docker engine. This is what most people, users, experience or new know as Docker, it's the Docker engine, right? The one that builds container. Um, the, the, the engine is basically also the interface between the, 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 the OS, the system and the rest of the platform, because the rest of the platform runs as containers. Uh, you have a registry server, you know that you need a registry uh, um, to store your images. This is our version of, uh, of that. Um, there's Swarm, which is our clustering solution, or orchestration. I'm not sure what orchestration means anymore in our, in our world whether it's containers or anything else. I mean, it's now a world that is, that is very big, right? I think we're going to split it into different tasks, different components. Um, but Swarm is basically 
uh, something simple, right? It takes a number of Docker engines and it builds a cluster of them and you can just decide to run a container talking to that cluster in, instead of talking to an individual engine. Um, and then Swarm is supposed to make the best decisions on, on when to, uh, where to run what. So it's clustering and, and scheduling. And then on top of that, we have what we call the universal control plane. This is what I'm going to, to show you. Um, the install part, at least, and some other features. And it's basically the control center, the user interface, and, and through all of these components, we also implement a lot of features. And I would say the first one is role-based access control. And I think that the first complaint about, oh, how would I run Docker in production, or how to build a an environment that is going to be multi-tenant is that, well, if someone can access the Docker engine, well, they can decide to mount any volume, they can access the host, and so on. And basically, the first mission of a platform like that is just give you an easy way to do role-based access control. Um, but there's a lot more. I think security is a, is a very interesting topic. Uh, we move from containers are not as secure as VMs, mainly focusing about isolation to a, a broader discussion about content security, security of images, what's in there, but also the images themselves. But do you know that it's still the same image that was produced? This is um, uh, enabled by, by what we call content trust, right? Signing images, making sure that you can authenticate uh, the provenance. Um, um, then, of course, there's the, the kind of a new model, right, around, around security. I think part of the discussion in general, why we start with VMs is because we have a clear model, okay, which is not entirely true. With VM, we say it's just like having different servers. In practice, it's not exactly the same, right? But it's, it's a mental model that works. And for a container, we don't really have a model because a container is not a thing, right? A container is just a set of... Um, features that isolate the process, but the process is just a process running on the host. There's not a box where you put something and the VM is basically like that in your, in your mind. So there's a lot going on in, uh, in security. If you're following a bit the, the development of uh, the engine in the community, you'll see there's a lot of stuff uh, happening and there's a lot of very interesting discussion around that. But I would say the first mission of the platform is this um, set of security features. Um, and the ID, Docker Data Center, it's, it's Docker in your data center, so basically that's the ID. But in a way, you could say it's like a virtual data center. Again, it's, it's a layer of abstraction. So the way it works is obviously it's going to run on, a, on an OS, and the engine is the interface with the OS. Uh, there's more and more uh, different uh, uh, OSs that are going to be supported in the future, but the ID is that it runs also on different type of infrastructure, physical server, virtual cloud platforms. And there's a set of APIs and plugins that allow you to leverage that. Right? I mean, if you think about storage, when you, you uh, we talked about, Daniel mentioned that, having volumes and so on. If you're on Amazon, in general, you're going to use EBS, right? So you want to create volumes on elastic block storage because this is the shared resilient storage solution in the platform. So the idea is to have a plugin for that. If you have a different environment, you could have a different plugin. So again, abstracting the environment so that you build your application, you know you're going to get this type of services like log management, uh, um, volume, to, to, that's the abstraction for storage management, and so on. But you don't have to target an environment for your application. You could even do, uh, let's say, last minute deployment. Technically, you could, in the future, you can imagine that people are going to start making decisions at the last minute based on price, based on uh, compliance issue, based on legal constraints or anything. But again, you get that layer of abstraction and then you target the environment. That's the, the basic idea. Uh, what else did I want to say? Yeah, abstraction across environment, that, that, that's the idea. But as a platform, also another another mission for for Docker Data Center is that it should leverage and allow you to to manage the low level features that are coming into the engine. 
And as an example that is uh, uh, that I like is authorization plugin. So I think it's in one, engine 1.10 1 that, that was introduced. Uh, if you use the uh, version of the engine that is uh, uh, at least uh, 1.10 or the latest 1.11, you can have a plugin that you can create yourself or you, there are some open source plugins, there are some resources around that, that is going to basically authorize every uh, action, every request of users and it can be quite granular because it also means that some of the API calls, some of the functionality of the APIs can um, uh, be authorized or not. Um, obviously, it's uh, it, it's very uh, it's it's really critical in production to be able to have things like that. I mean, there's always the example of what if I do a Docker exec this uh, when we talk about security, but it's also something that you have to manage. And if you choose to build it yourself, uh, it can be quite involved. So this is how UCP uh, uh, in Docker Data Center um, manages it, right? Defines roles, and these these roles are basically uh, going to be something like that. Like if I have a full control, I can do a Docker exec, but if I have a restricted access, I can run a container, but I cannot do um, more than that. So to, um, to um, summarize this, there's the idea of an integrated platform, but also the idea of bringing central management of some of the features that could be lower level features in, in, the, in the Docker engine. Um, that's a lot of talk already. I said that I would only cover five, five uh, slides, so I'm going to, to stop there. I'm not going, uh, I don't know how I'm going to handle the, the mic. I, I don't think I can type with the mic in my hand. So I'll try to... Shall I help you? Yeah. I get typed very quickly. Like typing. I get to type. <laughs> okay, thank you. That should work. All right. So, <laughs> you regret that already. So, I know how hard it is to do like a live demo, so I, I help you. Yeah, but maybe I can just talk like that. Is it, is it okay? Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, <laughs> All right, so, like I said, I just want to install it. It's just to give you a feel first that it's easy to install and that it's easy to get up and running and then to give you an idea of what it does, the basic functionality. I'm not going to show you a single <coughs> thing, auto scaling and, and, and stuff like that. I'm going to do the basic stuff. <coughs> um, but first, the installation. So what I have here, I, yeah, I have two nodes. I have two VMs, one by like for gdc.example.com, which is going to be the controller node where you have the, the user interface and so on. And I have a... Um, the Docker engine deployed already because that's not super interesting to install the Docker engine, so I said I would skip that. I do it with a, I have a little Ansible script if you're interested, um, that are all of that and configure the storage. Uh, I'm using CentOS here, so, and with the, with the overlay storage driver. Um, then I have another one that is going to be uh, just a node in the in the, the sorry the cluster, and it's going to run containers. So currently, it's just CentOS VM, um, CentOS Seven, of course, and I remove the firewall because I'd rather not have the firewall to manage during a demo. But of course, you wouldn't do that in the real world, right? You would fight with the firewall. I also have my SSH key, so it's easy. But apart from that, I just install the engine. And then, of course, I don't want to rely on the on the network connection. So, I mean, you know that when you do a Docker run, it actually does two things, right? If you do Docker run, that image, that command, um, first, the engine needs to look locally if the image is here. Right? If it's not, then it's going to pull it from the hub possibly from uh, the registry and so on. And that part is also uh, one uh, I don't want to do. I'd rather avoid, let's say. So I'm going to log in my controller. Um, uh, and I, I, have I have a copy of these images, right? Uh, I'm 
sure some of you already done, sorry, done things like that. Oh. That if you have if you have uh, images that are that are a bit big, sometimes it's good to preload them, right? To to pre-warm your nodes so that you don't have to have this kind of uh, download that is triggered every time. Um, and it's kind of an official way to install also because not everyone had access to the hub or not everyone has access to a local repository either. So having the option to just copy this image locally um, is very useful. So it's just, oh, it's missing here. The images are here. Just to show that I'm not cheating. I'm just going to, to copy that. It's a table of all the images that are that I use for Docker Data Center. Um, I put them. I'm still doing something, of course. It's not as slow as the network, but still. And it's going to take some time to load, of course, but less than if it was going over the network. I'm sure you all had experiences um, with very slow downloads. And when you see all your little <laughs> layers and you have to wait for just that one. I'm going to do that also on the, on the node. On the node, you don't necessarily need um, you don't necessarily need the whole the whole package, but just to be sure that I'm not missing anything, so I'm going to put that in my node also. This part is really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's a good idea. Uh, it's a balance between, so I don't have anything here, between something that is more entertaining but is just cheating, right? Because I could do everything in advance and just have to just do one comment. So I'm doing a bit of the actual real work that you have to do and that is painful. So I'm loading the images here also. It should be in there. SCP? Nope. Your SCP went wrong. Oh yes, that was bad. Nobody told me anything. Nice Thank you. Yeah, that's a good example of exactly what goes wrong. And now I'm going to have this package name. Is it finished here? So this is what we have. There's a lot of stuff in there. So everything that is UCP something is one of the components of a, of a the control plane, which is the control center and user interface. And then you have stuff that is starting with DTR and it's um, the, the, the trusted registry. Uh, uh, registry. Uh, I'm going to go through this. I just want to start the process here. This is it. Um, so loading manually, loading images manually, or, or, or saving them from a node and, and loading them then on another node is, uh, I don't know if you've had to do that a lot, but a lot of customers I work with that basically have no access to anything. Right? You, need, you need a node that has access to the hub to do the smallest download, like if you need a, a, a basic image that is on the hub, then you have to actually download it, save it somewhere because they're not interconnected and so on. So it's actually something I'm seeing a lot more than I expected. Uh, another pattern, I would say, uh, that we use in, in UCP is you have the first image is, is called just Docker UCP. And it's actually a utility. This is what we're going to use to install, to backup, and so on. Uh, that's also a, a pattern I'm sure a lot of you have worked with who have this kind of command encapsulated as a, as a container, it's really, um, I don't know that it's the case here, but 
it can be sometimes just a real script, right? Sometimes you just have a small maintenance script, you can wrap it in a container so that uh, you have uh, all the processes, all the workflows, and all the APIs uh, uh, that allow you to deploy it easily and so on, and also to remove it. So we have the images. Normally, you would start here, right, with the comment. I'm just going to run that UCP image, image I was talking about, which is just the basic UCP utility. We use it for everything, maintenance and so on, but also installation. And I run it as an ephemeral container. It means that when it's finished running, it's going to disappear. Again, it's very useful for, for maintenance, uh, batch jobs, and so on. I'm going to name it UCP, all of that I'm sure you know. And of course, uh, this is an installation script, so it needs actual access to the socket, which you don't want for any real application, but as a operation command, it's, it's OK. This is the one And I'm using the exact version here. We discussed about that. I think there's a in general to make things simpler. We all tend to use latest everywhere. Um, it's actually pretty good to always load down versions, but of course you could also do latest here. So I'm launching this and I'm using this command I mentioned, install interactive mode. I'm just going to pass it a parameter that is the host address and using the IP address of that node, which must be 15 or so. All right. <coughs> of course, I'm using a super weak password, like in every demo. Um, so <coughs> first thing you ask is that everything in the, in the Ankara Center is using TLS, and so you have certificates for all components. Uh, first thing it'll ask you is to confirm that you, you're covered in terms of first names, right? Especially, I'm going to just show you one node, but in, uh, in uh, production deployment, um, you want something that is more reliable than that, so you're going to have at least three nodes, could be five, seven, and you're going to have three of these controllers, uh, and then you have a load balancer, and you have a unique host name, and that the, the fully qualified name for the whole cluster <coughs> should also be part of the certificate. But in that case, I don't need that. I'm just going to give it its own QDN to make sure it's added in, on top of the IPs and all. And this is when the install cup starts and when I'm hoping it's going to actually work like it worked mm -hmm. all the previous time. But when you do it live, this is where you have problems with it. Um, okay, so it's, there's a CDA inside, it's going to generate uh, certificates also for uh, uh, itself, the controller, but you're going to have certificates for users, for all the components and so on. Um, when you replicate, you also have uh, to replicate, when you have like three controllers, let's say, you also have to replicate the CA, so that the CA is also HA. Uh, and again, here, uh, it's quite easy because we're just using one container and it should go through the, the different step and we should have uh, access to the user interface. So installation is finished, it gives you uh, some fingerprints because this is what you need when you want, want to add a node and so on. I'm just going to switch to the browser and do, this is a doc, I always have the doc open a new real tech people don't need the dog. So <coughs> you see example.com of course it's a self-signed certificate so I'm going to <coughs> and here I am. Oh yes. <laughs> Uh, 
So this is it. I mean, it, it's uh, in a way very uninteresting because um, it's a quick install and it works. But again, it's just to show you that it's just a set of containers. It's not different from most applications you would build yourself. And if I look at what's running now, you can see now. I don't know if it's. Is it, can you read that? <laughs> so you have quite a number of containers actually running. So this is a microservice architecture, right? <laughs> <laughs> you have the UCP controller itself, which is obviously a core component, but it's also re relying on a lot of others. And you have an authentication um, component that is going to manage users globally in the environment. So it's valid for, uh, um, in a way, it provides single sign-on inside the environment. I'm going to show you that because uh, it's actually one of the value of just starting using that is that everyone's authenticated. Um, and then you have the host store, you have tons of stuff, but you have here in the middle UCP Swarm, which is just Swarm, right? So I don't know if you've installed Swarm, um, but as part of the installation, there's a Swarm cluster that is deployed. There's a key value data store that is deployed. So everything is kind of uh, managed by the platform and it's. Uh, it's easy to get started. Uh, you don't have to do the whole dent yourself uh, with the key value that has no for for small. And you have, uh, I'm the admin user, so uh, this dashboard where I can see everything. Um, so I have containers running, of course. System containers are hidden by default. Uh, so uh, this is just a top of here. So a lot of what you see here is basically stuff you can the command line. And it's, it's actually a uh, feature, right? You want the consistency of uh, what you're doing. If you have users uh, who are used to the command line, they should be able to use it the same way. It's not because suddenly it's like a large platform with a cluster and you have authentication and so on that the user experience needs to change. So that's what I want to show you. But first, of course, we need nodes. We just have a controller. I could start running stuff on that, but it's not a cluster. It's not one node. So I'm going to add the to add that node. And in order not to have to, to type the whole common ID, I'm just going to copy paste, right? This is a little helper that generates the command with the fingerprint and so on. This is what you need to, to run on the nodes. So on the node you need the currenting of course. And you need to run that. And it's again using the same image, right? Uh, Docker UCP, it's the utility that does um, everything in terms of setup. Where am I? Okay, I'm on my node here. I should have my images. Yes. I should be able to do that, but I'm just going to change something. It's because I installed the image manually. I don't. I want to give it a version number. Right? It's going to search for um, the latest version of the image, and I want it to use the version I installed locally. That should be it. So the URL of the server, of course, it needs to authenticate. It's going to check the fingerprint I passed it to make sure that it's talking to the right um, to the right uh, server. I need the password to join. Again, I need to provide the aliases. If this node is going to have different names or, or IPs and so on, you need to add them there because, again, everything is using certificates. So uh, here, what do I need? I don't have n01example.com. So I'll add that. OK, so just telling you exactly what it's going to do. Uh, it's going to jam, and it's just telling you you have to manually restart the daemon for the changes to take effect. So 
as part of uh, the deployment, um, there's something that is done. I don't know if you've looked at um, overlay networks. So um, there's a, a network driver that is using VXLAN overlays, and it's also integrated to the platform. So if you look at the Docker engine configuration on the node, you see that as part of the installation, it actually configured um, some parameters for advertising, uh, 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 for um, engine discovery, sorry. And so the idea is that it's going to store the, the network, the networks that are created across nodes in the key value data store, so it needs to talk to it. So the, the Docker daemon parameters have changed. And I need to restart the daemon. Which is going to work. Okay, and you can see the parameter at the bottom. So if you played a bit with overlay networks, you will uh, um, see what that means. But if you haven't, uh, I, I'll just give you a, a look at this. So we have two nodes, and <coughs> now I have one that is a controller. And uh, in general, again, in production environment, you don't run workloads on the controllers, right? You run only the containers. Uh, that are used to, to manage the, the environment. But it's a small cluster, so I'm not going to restrict that. I'm going to let it deploy wherever it wants. And we can see here, hopefully, that there's a number of networks. So there's a, a number of drivers, right, for networks. It's host networking, which is just uh, using the host, the bridge is what you use by default. But now we also have overlays. So the idea of overlays is that um, they're VXLAN, right? They're tunnels, so that if you deploy containers as part of an application, they can talk to each other, um, other nodes, uh, and we don't. We can do discovery of the other services of the other containers just by their name, and you don't need to map ports and, and manage that yourself. So this is the solution we have, and it's just leveraging the VXLAN functionality of the network. I'm just doing a, a, a quick test here to make sure that it's, it's working correctly. You can create it. OK. Just to check that you have this, uh, this coordination between the, the nodes, right? I mentioned that there was this, this, series of, uh, this series of parameters that were added to the engine configuration. That's to store shared network. Uh, parameters in the key Okay, so now I have a working environment. I have a cluster, I have a, I have a swarm cluster, really, that is managed by UCP. I have a web user interface, which makes everything so easy. Um, so I'm just going to show you some of the user and role based access control quickly. I'm creating a user because, of course, I'm not going to do everything as admin. That's bad. Demo, I'm not telling you the password. Um, right. And you have, as a user, a default permission. And this user, the default permission is no access. OK. So what it means is that as an admin, I'm going to create a container. I'm going to use Alpine because it's small. Um, I'm going to make a very interesting name. And just give it a command. I'm sure you've used Alpine to do demos or use it or something like that. Just need a command and it's going to terminate. So this one it has to download. Do you have network access? That's a good question. I, I should have asked myself this. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do have um, So there's a, there's a container running. All right, fantastic. Now, what I need to do is I need to log in as the demo user. Just to show you how authentication works. Of course, I see like 
Some people are making a long face. You don't have to use the user, the graphical user interface. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> the CLI is still here. So because I'm just a user and not an admin, I have a lot less stuff to see. Um, so what is funny is that I'm not seeing the container. Of course, that's what we want, right? And I'm going to download the founder number. Oh, that's not good. So the idea is that to to uh, authenticate yourself in the in the environment, UCP is going to generate a, a certificate that you're going to use. And it's also going to give you uh, uh, some scripts so that you can in, uh, initialize your environment. So you don't have to do a, a login or anything. It's just uh, going to authenticate you um, using the, the certificate. Now, where should I put this? So, I have a terrible name. All right, I'm going to grab my bundle. Of course, it's not that simple because yeah. I'm sure it's not there. So um, let's say I'm going to remove the previous one I had. times in the same session is, is really bad. So demo you should be you should be demo user and uh, so let's have a look at this one. As you can see it's just set up certificates and a few scripts that are just going to initialize your environment. It's nothing uh, very sophisticated, but it's just to provide you a workflow. That means that, okay, now my environment is initialized and if I do a Docker, um, yes, well, I don't have anything because I'm the demo user and I don't have access to this. Um, so, two ways to change access, right? First, as an admin, what I can do is define a team. You have the demo team, of course, because it is is demo and I'm going to add the demo user right? and I'm going to add a, a label for stuff that the demo team can manage. So this is a bit this is the mapping, right? You're going to have labels for everything. Currently um, in Docker, you know that you cannot have labels on, on uh, volumes on network, but this is a uh, common feature. So the idea is that you should be able to, based on label, define exactly what part of the environment uh, this team and the team members can, can access. Which means that now if I'm uh, still as admin, deploying again, I'm fine. But this time it's for a demo team. I can give I can assign that label and it's going to work. Well, I should. Should I look first? See, this one we have the second one, right? This one is called test demo. And because there's a label saying that it's the authorization label for, for the demo team, this one is visible. Um, 
Now, of course, you can also give more rights to your users, right? So the demo user um, I can decide that my demo user has full control. Nice. Nice bug. And if I have full control, then I can do it myself. I can do... I can launch a same container here, um, and let's see. So <laughs> <laughs> plan. Uh, I guess it died. Yes, it died. I don't want to do what I want to do. But um, well, I should be able to do this one. I shouldn't try stuff on the way. I think it's just dying for some reason. Um, nice, I tried that. So, quite quickly, again, I didn't do anything very uh, spectacular. If you've had to uh, transition from doing stuff with Docker, with thinking in terms of a platform and how it look with different uh, uh, users, it gives you an idea, right, of what you're trying to achieve. Again, it's, it's uh, uh, basically moving from an environment where everything is open, where everything is, is authenticated, and trying to, to give granular uh, access control to teams and users in that way. Uh, the an upcoming feature is going to provide you with a way to define things like, okay, this user can fully access containers, but they can add access volumes and so on, so you're going to have more as more level incomes also into the platform. Um, and just as a way to uh, give you a last example that is more than just running a, an Alpine uh, an Alpine container, this is the, uh, um, I could do Okay, I need to. So this. Okay. I'm going to test the network this time. But it's just to show that it's still the same Docker environment, right? So you have a. Um, you have all base access control, and but behind it's just uh, a swarm cluster, and we have the same features and the same API. It's not changing that, so I should be able to do. Um, create a compose application. So this time it's going to download, and while it's doing that, maybe we can take a, a few questions after the, the run through it and that. Any question about that? Can I have the price product? Yes. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean by that? No, but I mean it's not, it's not free available. It's, uh, no, so this is not freely available. This yeah. is a, it's a commercial product. Yeah, yeah, commercial. The idea is that it builds on the component. They are still here. It's still swarm, the engine, and so on. But the whole platform is a, is a product. Mm -hmm. Can you say anything about license, uh, how that works, or is it based on nodes, or is it based Yeah, it's based on nodes, so the idea is that uh, one node where you have an engine, basically, and you have a subscription that is based on the number of nodes, so it's not based on what you deploy or whether you have uh, three controllers or just one or more, which is the size of one. Yeah. Whoa, it's a lot slower than expected. Yeah, please. Uh, would you be able to uh, install your own network plugins? Agreed. Your own, sorry? Your own network or storage plugins? Yeah, of course the idea is that like, you have the engine, right? So 
you can still deploy whatever you want. You can deploy any any container. It's not doing anything anything else. Uh, obviously, because it's a it's a supported pro product, uh, we also want to have uh, plugins that are certified and supported. But we already have uh, have uh, users who are installing their pro their their plugins uh, uh, from the community and so on. Right? It doesn't change anything. The APIs and the components are exactly the same. Right? It's just a management uh, 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 some tooling around the environment and also things like deploying and managing the Swarm cluster automatically instead of uh, doing it manually and things like that. But it's not changing the Docker component themselves like the engine. Yeah, it's like you said. <coughs> There's already some, um, um, I don't know for networking, but for example, we're talking about monitoring. Uh, um, uh, SysDig made a, made a blog post about how they integrate with UCP, and it's just the same as any, any other Swarm cluster, right? For that. Mm. <laughs> you have to ask questions until it comes up to the side. Anything else? Yeah, please. Is the virtual API the same as the free API in use? Yes, the API don't change, and, and the different components, they use the API, right? So uh, UCP uses the, um, um, use the registry API to talk to it and so on. So the, the, the API don't change. The only thing is that there's another API, which is the UCP API, so that um, things that uh, you could do with UCP, including configuring it, uh, can be accessed with the API. So you can also use the commercial API, UCP. Yeah, you can use the, the UCP API to manage uh, UCP itself, but to deploy containers and, and, and manage that, that would be the same API that you're using. You're talking to Swarm, you're talking to Docker and mm. Yeah? What's the default sign on Docker Pole? Is it like, it's like the... Apparently, the Wi-Fi might be screwed, so... Oh, okay. If, if you connect, you also then have to sign up for the browser. Oh, yeah. Okay, interesting. But I was connected, it worked for, for all time. So. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's for I don't know. We we'll know, we should count, we had the timer and we could have probably lost it. So that's kind of, that's an interesting question. I think at every Docker meetup I'm going to ask that to whoever presents. What's the different timer? Maybe everybody start paying attention and stop watching YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, possibly it's not actually pulling us in. We should see. We should see. When was that time? Yeah, I think actually I don't have network access. I had uh, Alpine pre-installed. This is cheating again. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the images. I could. I could. Who's there? I could do. I could do that manually again, just to show it works. Hopefully. Can I do it this time? I'm not very good at doing it. Yeah, I think it was in the game. Yeah. Yeah. Even locally, it's not. Right here. <coughs> Just 
Another question? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I should have prepared something. something <coughs> Imagine if I was downloading from the internet, that would be. That was then, right? Yes? What's the worst error you've encountered using the platform? The worst error? Ah, that's yeah. a good question. <laughs> um, I've done something. So it's still a kind of a new product, I'm sure we'll find some more interesting stuff. But I, I have a local deployment on my laptop and uh, there's three nodes, right, for HA. So it's, it's doing replication, it's using a key validator cell that is replicated. And because it's a laptop, I just close the lead and start it again. So the VMs tend to have a very interesting life where they start, literally they start again. And the key validator I start trying to reconnect and synchronize. But I've managed to kill just one of the one of the containers uh, on one of the nodes, and now the node is not working. And I still don't know how I achieved that. Like, how can I kill just one? I understand everything disappearing or something like that, but I, I'm still tracking that works. But the good thing is that you can just reinstall one node. I'm afraid it's not super interesting, and, but it's a great question. Uh, I need to find better, better things. Um, so we have... Uh, we have the images right here. And we have them here also. So now, I go back to the app. I'm still <coughs> in the environment, yes. Control controls. So this time it should actually start creating stuff. And we can see how it progresses here. So if you've used Docker Compose, right, so that's how we define the concept of a, an application in the, in the environment. So we have this here and a number of containers. It's waiting for the DB. The DB is in here. Nice. It's in the network. Yeah, it's not seeing the network. <coughs> That's the worst error. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> uh, so why not? See, there's a there's a nobody network here, and it's not running it. So because I'm very experienced, I'm going to do very sophisticated debugging, which is stopping and starting again. <laughs> <laughs> So it's um, Postgres complaining. And it's interesting because, so this is an application that was developed um, by some of the, I think the engineers working on, uh, on Docker Compose. And it's an interesting demo because you have a number of, of components. You have Postgres, you have Redis, mm -hmm. you have two different uh, uh, web apps. And it's interesting that I use it a lot for doing demos or just checking my environment work and the thing that fails in general is the is the database when there is an issue, right? You need everything to work very well. So if there's any disruption it's going to be for the database. I mean there was a discussion about running databases on uh, on the car. I think it, it, it's still the part that is a bit tricky. Obviously in an environment you have running on your laptop it's not a good use case. But it's interesting that it's maybe some of the most fragile this case. So this database is just not running. I'm sorry. <coughs> and I'm not going to debug that, but the idea is that I have a, a container here that is running the database, and it's all part of the same application. Is it even running? 
So yeah, the voting app is working itself. It's the other app, the result app that is not going to work. Yeah. So the application is not functional. But then we have the concept of an application that means that you can also um, look at the resources at the application level and at the individual container and you have a level of management at, uh, at that level. And that's it, that's the real tour of, uh, of uh, data center that I wanted to show you. Hopefully it has been interesting. I think an aspect is presenting you Docker data center. Another aspect is that there are some topics that you need to, <coughs> you need to address basically However, you do it, right? That's that's our vision of the platform, and that's something that uh, we're working on. That's going to evolve. But obviously, if you think again about Daniel's presentation, then you have most of the topics here, right? And uh, uh, this is actually the stuff that you need to figure out, right? Whether you're dealing with the pure open source component, whether you're dealing with different components from different vendors, different projects, whether you're using a, an integrated solution like this. It's still going to be about user management, security, how you manage your images, and then it's going to be about monitoring of the environment and so on. This is just um, obviously um, a small overview of monitoring, but it is part of the package. That's it for me. Thank you.